Oh, good morning. Okay. Reminiscing again. Uh, this was the early 80s. 84, 85 time frame. I was in uh, 115 stationed in uh, Buford. And we decided to come out here to Yuma for three weeks. Well, we get out here to Yuma. Yuma is a party in town. Always has been. Especially for the military. Well, I worked a midnight shift. It was a master sergeant in ordinance. And, uh, <laughs> Cricket, gun receiver, Major Daniels, they were all there. And, uh, this was funny. Anyways, I like stirring the pot. Yeah. Uh, we were at uh, the barracks watching TV and the uh, maintenance chief, master sergeant, I can't recall his name right now, said that uh, he had a few drinks out in town, was going to call the duty, have the duty come out and get him, take him back to base. But he couldn't remember the number, so he called the operator. And the operator hit on him. Told him that it's been a long time since she's had a real Marine in bed with her and all this and that. And, <laughs> you know, <laughs> Master Sergeant apparently got all flustered. Uh, a couple of days later, uh, he didn't show up for work. And uh, I was at the barracks, stopping I just had breakfast. And, Walked back to the barracks and we seen the sergeant major knocking on his door because he didn't show up work that morning. And I looked at the sergeant major and I said, "Oh, apparently you didn't get the word." Well, what word is that, Sergeant Taylor? Yeah, <laughs> new sergeant major. <laughs> yes, yeah. Learned how to call me Gene. So anyhow, I looked at him and I went, "Oh, remember that uh, phone call he had with that operator?" Uh, apparently he went up to Phoenix and he's in jail. He called the duty trying to get some bail money. Apparently they arrested him for obscene phone calls to operators. So he's in jail. Well, I walked away. Master Sergeant looked at me and went, You're not, no, no, Gene. And I went, <laughs> We're in Yuma. <laughs> Gotta have fun. <laughs> I went to bed. Well, I got up about noon. Decided to go swimming. You know, do some strokes. And then go out for my run. So I got to the barracks. The uh, master sergeant in charge of uh, avionics was over there swimming. He comes up to me and he goes, Hey, did you hear about the top? And I looked at him and I says, Heard what? I played dumb. Well, <laughs> uh, he's up in Phoenix. He's in jail. Something about obscene phone calls to operators. You're kidding me. I played dumb. Yeah. Well, anyways, in the morning paper that morning, there was an article about a captain that uh, wanted to get married. The only thing is, he fell in love with a sergeant. Well, Commandant Marine Corps got involved with it. Told him to end the relationship. Kind of fraternization thing. Well, at the same time, this same sergeant was bringing charges against this other captain for rape. And uh, nothing's being done there. So I cut the article out, hung it up in maintenance control with the caption, you know, marriage is illegal, rape is legal. Comment on Marine Corps. Well, we also had a uh, female 
in the electric shop. Now this girl wore a dunce hat, hat like you wouldn't believe. You know these reversible crescent wrenches. Well, <laughs> she called them the any and Audi. You got an any one and you got an Audi one. You know, putting screws in, taking screws out. I mean, this girl was dunce. But anyways, uh, Avery, staff's are in Avery. Picked up this poster at the seven day store. Hung it up in the ComNav shop. And this girl protested like you wouldn't believe. Because it was a picture of this girl in a bikini selling Mac 2's or something. And this girl was insulted about it. So I went ahead and went to the seven day store and bought a Playgirl. And when I went into work that night, all this stuff happened the same time frame, same night. I went over to the electric shop and hung the centerfold up in the electric shop with the caption, Equal Rights. Told the sergeant to let Terry see it in the morning. You know, Terry might get a kick out of it. I, then I went to work. Well, in the morning, all three stories came to light. <laughs> Major Daniels was sitting in there as we were having a couple of situations going on with a couple of airplanes and parts and you know it, it was hectic maintenance wise but anyways the uh, sergeant major came in and uh, looked at me and he goes uh, Gene I understand that uh, You're the instigator of uh, that operator thing. Who, me? About that time, the master sergeant from Avionics walks in, looks at me, and he goes, Playgirl? I looked at him and kind of smiled, and I went, Yeah? Gotta have equal rights. You know, I was gonna take a centerfold picture of me and hang it up there in a speedo. Sergeant Major made a comment. <laughs> about, about the second story. And lo and behold, the third story happened. Because all of a sudden, the Sergeant Major looked on the board concerning that marriage is illegal, rape is legal, Commandant Marine Corps. He looked at that and he went, oh my God. Gene, we need to talk. And I looked at him and I went, we're in Yuma. Well, about that time, the maintenance chief walked in looked at me and he goes Jane we need to talk Gunner receiver popped up and said which subject maintenance chief looked at Gunner receiver and went huh well right now Gene's being blamed for three incidences and I think he's guilty for all three of them oh come on you know, have a heart. I'm not guilty for any of them and <laughs> I'm on my time now. Well, <laughs> Major Daniels put a stop to it. And he goes, you have menopause this morning? And I went, sure did, five o'clock. Okay, okay. Um, I agree with the newspaper article. I also agree with the um, 
equal rights thing over there at the electric shop. But Gene, I think you won't top here an apology. <laughs> I looked at the top and went, Master Sergeant, I do humbly apologize about making up that story about you and that operator and you getting locked up. But at the time it sounded good. <laughs> Everybody cracked up and started laughing. <laughs> well, Sergeant Major has all the fat bodies out. Ice cream truck comes by. So I go out. Now, I, ice cream is <clears throat> dollar. And you get a little cone with a little bit of ice cream on it. Well, <laughs> I give two dollars. Because <laughs> I want to double the ice cream because of the fat body. <laughs> my ice cream and I'm eating it in front of all the fat bodies <laughs> and Sergeant Major is <laughs> get out of here <laughs> you're teasing them <laughs> yeah <laughs> they're fat <laughs> just having fun well we get on the airplane to come back home and uh, something happened outside. I was running late or something. But the only seat that was available was sitting next to Gunner Seaver on one side and the Sergeant Major on the other side. And uh, <laughs> the top is sitting there. And the top goes, hey Gene, what? Well, I see you're in a good spot. Too bad kiddos and bits ain't here. <laughs> and I looked at him. And Gunner looked at him. And went, we're still dealing with that. And, and the top goes, yeah, we sure are, because three is an uneven number. There's got to be a fourth. There's got to be something else that that son of a bitch did. <laughs> All the way home. They were going through all the stuff that was happening out in Yuma. Now, I'm not talking job-wise. I'm talking fun-wise. Well, Jack Bays bought a bikini. <laughs> he met his girl at the swimming pool and he bought a bikini for her daughter. <laughs> I humiliated him at the swimming pool. You know, pedophile, you know, more skin. <laughs> because the mother had a one piece on. But the little, I don't know, she must have been eight or nine with a bikini. And I was razzing Jack, that you wouldn't believe. Jack works right You know, I always considered him a loony toony to begin with, but what man buys a bikini for an eight or nine year old? Yeah, that to me is sick. Anyway, they chalked that up to four to make it an even number. <laughs> uh, anyway, we get back to Yuma and uh, uh, it was just before Thanksgiving. And I 
told you that uh, in the F4 community, you go to work in the morning and you may not make it home for supper. Well, we launched this airplane first thing in the morning, midshift, did a couple days before Thanksgiving. My uh, uh, ex-grandmother-in-law came down because she wanted to be with uh, people that loved her. Well, just before I went to Yuma, uh, we found out that Grandma was coming down. So uh, I went down to Savannah to get her. Uh, six months before that, we were home on leave. She was in the hospital. She had cancer. And she was going through chemo, lost all of her hair. Uh, I go into the hospital. Her daughter's there. Yeah, my mother-in-law. <laughs> mother-in-law from hell. But anyways, I look at Grandma. And uh, I'm standing beside her bed. They asked her, you know, what are you doing? You're supposed to be home making me some coffee. And she looked at me and she goes, Gene, I can't do that right now. And I said, ho, ho, ho. Oh, you're procrastinating. Get up. Come on, I'll take you home. I need some good coffee. Yeah, <laughs> because your daughter can't make good coffee. And, uh, I popped up and I said, you know, these hospital rooms like this are supposed to be for sick people, and you're faking it. Come on, Grandma. Well, she told me she would, and I said, okay, okay. Boy, I tell you what, the rain got mad at me as hell for that. Well, six months later, we get a phone call that Grandma's coming down. I'm going to spend some time with us. So I go down to Savannah to get her. On the way back, she was complaining about the pills that she had to take. So I told her, <laughs> there's a window. Well, she tossed her pills out. So I told the ex about it. And, uh, yeah, I ended up getting a hold of Mike. Going down and getting them. At that time, my daughter was probably eight years old. She just lost her turtle. According to her, it croaked. And we buried it in her window underneath, the, in the backyard underneath the window, made a little tombstone for it. And, uh, anyhow, I ended up getting the pocketbook full of pills, finding them finally after about a couple hours. And uh, Grandma just refused to take her pills. Now after she got up speed with jet lag, because it just tore her apart. That airplane from New York to Savannah just tore her, tore her apart. And she slept for about 10 hours. Well, it was Saturday morning, I was out uh, changing spark plugs and the points in the car. And uh, Grandma came out, had two cups of coffee. Her and I sat down, had coffee. Well, Pam came out and said that uh, she needed milk. So I got my wallet out. And gave my daughter five dollars to go to the seven days store and get a jug of milk. And because uh, the seven days store is only like three blocks away. Well grandma said uh, well why don't I take the children and go? Sure. Well she walked the children all the way to the seven day store, got the milk, came back, 
play down the playground a little bit on the way coming back. And made it home. By that time I was done with the car. My grandma and I had another cup of coffee. And we talked. And uh, she told me that she's not taking her pills. And it's the best she's ever felt. And I told her, I said, well, my belief is uh, in reaction, there's an equal and opposite reaction. And if you take pills, your system's going to react the way the pills are by not doing what the body's supposed to do. Then when you quit taking the pills, your body gets lazy and you end up getting sick. So anyways, I go to work a couple of days before Thanksgiving and uh, sure enough, Dallas, Texas, airplane goes down. The other five of us loaded up on the 117 and flew to Dallas. We had to wait till the day after the day just before Thanksgiving. In other words, it was like 9.30 that night that I got home the day before Thanksgiving. Uh, I go in, into the house and find out that Grandma was taken to Buford Memorial Hospital. So I get in my car and I'm still in uniform, but I go to Buford Memorial I went to the ICU, and it was after hours, but uh, I explained to the nurse what was going on, and she allowed me to go in and see Grandma. Well, Grandma informed me that she's ready to go to God. Well, at that time, I was still anti-Christ. I said, well, you believe what you believe, and I'll believe what I believe. Well, Grandma said that she's going to say a prayer before she goes to sleep about me having my eyes open. Hindsight being 2020, I remember Chuck saying the same thing. But anyways, I get home. I got home about 1 o'clock in the morning. Well, <laughs> they arrived while I was at Buford Memorial Hospital. And I'm talking Lorraine and about four women that, oh my God, it was packed. Well, I just went to bed and uh, let the women fend for themselves where they were going to sleep at because I'm not giving up my bed. Eh, no way. Well, anyways, Five o'clock, the phone rings. I get up, walk out in the kitchen and answer the phone. It's Buford Memorial Hospital. And apparently, Grandma passed within the last few minutes. So I thanked her. I went in, woke up the ex, told her about Grandma. Oh my God. She started wailing and crying and upsetting everybody and everybody started crying and I'm, oh my God, I went out, poured myself a cup of coffee and I'm sitting at the kitchen table. Nobody's in the kitchen, they're all in the living room, blatting. They woke my daughter up. Chris comes out, comes up to me and sits on my lap. Welcomes me home, gives me a hug and a kiss, told me that she missed me those three days, and that we're having turkey for supper. And I said, yeah, today's Thanksgiving. And then she wanted to know why everybody was crying. And uh, about that time, Lorraine came out in the kitchen. And I looked at my daughter and I went, well, you remember Grandma coming down, right? Great Grandma? Yeah. Yeah. She she went to the hospital. She didn't feel good. And I went, 
Yeah. Well, apparently, Grandma croaked this morning. Oh, Jesus. Wrong word. Lorraine just started chastising me. I inform Lorraine I'm going to talk the way the children understand it. Because if I looked at Chris and said the word pass, she would not understand. But she understands the word croaked because of her turtle. My mother's not a turtle. You insulted my mother. Oh my God. Get out of here, Lorraine. Jeez. Get out of here. You know, anyhow, Chris started crying about Grandma passing, and I just held on to her. Well, the girls asked me if I was going to go to New York for the. No, I'm not going with you, women. Jesus, you're fighting over Grandma's underwear. I'm not. <laughs> nah, you, you women just pack up and get the hell out of here. Jesus. I'm staying here. So I get a phone call from the mortician after the girls go. And uh, he asked me to come by and pay my respects. And I said, okay. So I went to the mortician. And he was done with one side of her face. And he wanted to know about the resemblance. And I said, yeah. Yeah, that's pretty close. That's pretty close. You're doing a good job. Well, didn't really have much to work with. What do you mean? Look at the other side. So he removed the cloth of the other side. Holy cow. <laughs> Boy, I tell you, what happens to your body when you die? You know, things just fall off you. Well, anyways, that being said, I just thought I'd uh, reminisce a little bit more. And, uh, yep, yeah, this is about 28 minutes. So this will be uploaded, uploaded shortly. Well, you guys have a beautiful day and take care and just remember one thing God provides he gives you the will to live and the will to die so anyway 28 minutes so God bless you